my friends welcome to this unique platform to learn veterinary related stuff i heartily welcome my youtube family to your own channel veterinary wizard a very thanks to all of you who like my videos and have subscribed my channel if you are not one of them kindly subscribe our channel and become a part of our youtube family okay let's start for today today i am going to tell you about hemochosis in bovines please watch this complete video so that you will not miss important things discussed here in this video you will learn overview of hemochosis incidence and geographical distribution pathophysiology clinical findings causes and risk factors diagnosis pathological findings and treatment let's start with the overview hemochosis is a voracious blood sucking single host parasite that causes anemia hypoproteinemia and death in ruminants particularly small ruminants in warm moist environments hemochosis is typically the dormant gastrointestinal nematode of pasture producing system hemochosis species tend to be host specific with some potential for cross infection populations of hemochosis have developed resistance to almost all currently available and health methods it mainly affects the digestive and hemolymphatic system moving onward is the incidence and geographical distribution when conditions are suitable for transmission nearly 100% of pasture ruminants will be infected but the prevalence of clinical disease will vary with the number of worms that are able to establish in specific individuals animals grazing in humid tropical regions and regions with summer rainfall with daily mean temperatures greater than 15 degree celsius or 59 degree fahrenheit and monthly rainfall greater than 50 mm are more susceptible for hemochosis now let's start about its pathophysiology adult hemochosis females have great fecundity and an individual can release more than 5000 eggs per day into the host feces l1 and l2 stages survive on bacteria without manure the l2 sheds its cuticle during development to the infective l3 stage 5 to 10 days after eggs are released onto pasture ruminant hosts are infected by ingesting the l3 from pasture this stage can only exit the fecal palate and ascend vegetation in a film of moisture the l3 stage exits in the rumen and moves to the apomegm enters gastric pits and molds to l4 the l4 feeds on blood and molds to the l5 and then the adult stage which can mate and produce eggs approximately 3 weeks after being acquired adult worms can live for months in susceptible hosts adult worms produce so many eggs that some offspring will survive unfavorable conditions within or without of the host the l3 larvae maintain a protective cuticle that helps them avoid desiccation and they can survive on pasture for weeks to months depending on conditions during prolonged periods of drought or winter weather axids larvae survive in the fecal palate they are inactive and apparently do not utilize stored energy when rain occurs they rapidly exit the fecal palate the early l4 stage can undergo hypobiosis which is arrested development within the apomegm these larvae are in a state of inactivity and are not affected by the host's immune system they survive until conditions within the host or environment are more favorable before resuming their life cycle adults and developing larvae possess a buccal lancet that allows laceration of capillaries in the abomasal mucosa to facilitate feeding they have prolyl carboxypeptidases 
विच कैन एक्ट एज एंटी कोगुलेंट्स टू फैसिलिटेट फीडिंग लॉस ऑफ रिथ्रोसाइट्स एंड सीरम प्रोटीन कोजिस क्लिनिकल साइंस ऑफ अनिमिया एंड हाइपो प्रोटीनीमिया विच कैन बी प्रोफाउंड to the point of causing severe morbidity and mortality next is the clinical signs clinical signs can vary from per acute to acute or chronic in nature and reflect variably severe anemia and hypoproteinemia and diarrhea is also an infrequent clinical sign clinical signs primarily reflect anemia and hypoproteinemia Per acute disease is typically reflected by sudden weakness, pallor, recumbency, and death. As the PCV falls to less than 10 percent, typically only a few individuals in the flock will be affected in this manner. Soft stool or melina may be observed. In acute disease, a larger number of individuals in the flock will be affected. Anemia. pale mucous membranes and hypoproteinemia a bottle jaw are the most common clinical signs constipation can occur and wool break off occurs in sheep several weeks after acute clinical signs chronic disease is often reflected by ill thrift with poor quality wool weight loss or failure to gain and anemia can be unresponsive due to iron depletion now what are the causes and risk factor for this disease first is the warm humid climatic condition second one is young or lactating animals when animals are producing at their genetic maximum they are at greater risk of parasitic disease because they are immunologically and nutritionally challenged Female ruminants are unable to mount a protective immune response against helminths during the periparturant period. And the last one is heavily stocked and grazed pastures. Finally, the diagnosis. How can you diagnose the animal affected by moncus? We can diagnose it by clinical signs, fecal tests such as McMaster technique and fecal flotation technique. capoculture pcr and cbc biochemistry or urinalysis in acute cases cbc reveals reduced erythrocyte count and blood hemoglobin concentrations chronic hemochosis results in depletion of iron cobalt and copper hence microcytic hypochromic anemia may occur Serum protein concentrations are reduced with reduced albumin to globulin ratio. Now what will be pathological findings in this case? Gross postmortem examination identifies adult worms in the abomasum if performed within 24 hours of death. Body cavities may contain transudate and the abomasal mucosa may range from normal to markedly thickened and ulcerated. intermandibular edema and paler of mucosa membranes is commonly evident feces may be normal loose or dark and dry bone marrow may appear red and hyperplastic histological findings are associated with anemia hypoxemia hypoproteinemia abomasitis and bone marrow hyperplasia there may be centrally lobular hepatic necrosis interstitial edema of organs and infiltration of the abomasal mucosa with lymphocytes eosinophils and mast cells moving forward is treatment hemonchus in cattle and in small ruminants in cooler climates are currently still susceptible to some benzimidazoles levamisole morantel or macrocyclic lactones if administered at an adequate dose via an appropriate route several new classes of anthelmintics are available in different geographic areas and include the amino acetonitrile derivative monipental the octadepsi peptide imodepside and a member of spiroindoles class terquental 
Last but not the least is the contradictions of the drugs used for treatment of hemochosis. Most of the currently available anthelmintics have a wide safety margin. However, levamisole, especially when injected, can cause signs of nervous stimulation including salivation, lacrimation, urination and defecation. And albendazole in early pregnancy can cause embryonic losses or teratogenic effects. A vaccine, Barbarvax, was recently made available for use in Australia, where it is reported to have 75 to 95 percent efficacy against hemonchus infection in sheep, and is administered at four to nine subcutaneous injections at approximately six week intervals. That's all for today. If you haven't subscribed my channel, then do subscribe Veterinary Wizard. Thank you very much for supporting me and watching this video.